Hello and welcome again to UCL Global Health. Arguably the Millennium Development Goals have been the biggest thing in global health almost ever. Since 2000 we've had goals and targets set around poverty, education, gender, maternal and child survival, HIV, TB, malaria, uh, the environment and global partnerships. And they've acted as a focus for really all of the world's community to come together and reach targets by 2015. But now there's a big debate going on. What's going to replace the Millennium Development Goals? And I'm joined by uh, Richard Horton again, editor of The Lancet. And the word on the street is not MDGs now. It's going to be SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. Why that? Well, we're going to go into a phase of, of uh, the next big thing is sustainable development, and we had the Rio Plus 20 meeting earlier in June, which kind of set the agenda for the next 10 or 15 years, came up with 26 different areas, of which health was one of those, and it's been narrowed down to nine, things like inequalities, the environment, and so on, population. But the, the big fight that's going to take place over the next 12 months is what is going to be an SDG, a Sustainable Development Goal, and it is not guaranteed by any means that health will be one of the global priorities for the next decade, and that is a massive sea change compared with the last 10 years. I mean, health will be there, it's just you're worried that will you're it, going to be diluted it, out. It, do you know that health will be there? No, I don't. I mean, I know that there's going to be a lot of meetings in the next nine months, oh, and yes. I think there are some meetings coming up, particularly in March, where all the Sherpas from the UN are going to get together to try and construct new goals. But we can't be sure that health... I was talking to somebody from Diffrid just last week who was very clear that she said health is absolutely not sure to be an SDG. And what we've got actually is interesting because David Cameron and the heads of state of Liberia and Indonesia are leading this process to decide what the future of the planet's going to be for the next decade. Um, and they've got a whole array of different things they could choose. You know, yeah. from, at the moment in the financial crisis, jobs, economic growth, the economy, these are much, much mm. bigger issues for them than worrying about health. Education, perhaps it's time for education to have its day in the sun. Not okay, so the, the bad news might be that health gets really marginalised and that that has a, and that everything goes backwards from what are the current MDG targets, but you could turn it on its head and say, actually, the one thing that the environment lobby needs is the energy that the health community have brought particularly to the MDGs. But let's start with those risks. So you're really worried about this. You think that we won't get health onto the agenda. I would find that very surprising. I am really worried. Uh, you know, <coughs> what you've got at the moment is a process whereby a group has to report by March to David Cameron's high level panel to make recommendations about health in the post-2015 mm. era. Um, we have got literally just five months to get our act together and decide what we want to say as a health community. And you know, the truth is, we have got a million issues, but what are we really going to recommend? Are we going to say it should be the MDGs just kind of repackaged? Or are we going to say it should be a completely different agenda? Um, where, what about non-communicable diseases, which we've missed out for so long? Perhaps they should be the thing we're arguing right. for. The one thing we, everybody's coalesced around is universal health coverage. That's the big idea that the health community has alighted on to recommend as an SDG. The problem with universal health coverage is it's all about services. You can't say in an inspirational way, I want to passionately fight for what? Universal health coverage? It's not an end. It's not saving children's lives or, or doing something that's about people. So I think we have a real problem in articulating what our aspiration is in the health community, and we really only have five months to get it right. All right, let's come on to, let's take climate change. Climate change is arguably the greatest health threat that faces us all. The science is terrible. Yeah. Many people think we're now heading towards a four-degree world this century. Clearly, it's right that sustainability is built into the central plank of UN policy, um, isn't that a good idea and isn't that the thing that we should be focusing on and won't we bring perhaps new energy to a process that almost died in, in Rio plus 20? Yeah, I mean I think climate change is the big issue that's hanging over the entire area of sustainable development, that's right, but I think that's where the health community really does have almost an obligation to embrace climate change as one of its central tenets, and that's why universal health coverage may just not be the right idea. 
Um, I think if you think about universal health rather than universal health coverage, and you, it's, it's kind of reinventing health for all for us in an era of sustainable development. And then in thinking about universal health, you bring in these determinants, because you've got to bring in the determinants of, of what produces health. Mm. And over the next century, as you say, climate change is going to be the critical determinant. So I think we in the health community have got to do a much better job of, of making that alliance between health and the environment, in particular climate change. And you know right now, in all the consultations I've seen, Nobody talks about climate change. It's like the big invisible... Subject. The taboo subject. It really is, because it's too difficult for people to get their heads around. Kyoto failed. Copenhagen, you know, all, all these things failed. Can't so, we turn climate change into a health issue? I mean, you know, inequalities are central. If you bring people out of poverty, you make them more resilient to the effects of climate change. But if you are addressing non-communicable diseases, we're all getting fat and stressed and over-consuming. If we can stop that and become more active and consume less, we solve NCDs, but hopefully in the process we'll go some way to reducing our carbon footprint. But we're going to be up against vested interests. Massive transnational corporations that don't want us to do that. You mm. can see in the news right now, within the coalition government in the UK, a fight over whether we should be putting more or less emphasis on the environment. Uh, uh, George Osborne is arguing less, David Cameron apparently arguing more. We, we don't have a settled view on this. So in the health community, mm. we should be using the science we produce as the foundation for activism and advocacy around climate change and health. And again, I think we, we had a golden moment a couple of years ago, which was to do with the UCL Commission, work that Andy Haynes did. We really had an opportunity, and we kind of flunked it. Not the science community, but in getting that work translated into policy, we didn't succeed. And then we kind of rode back, and we haven't pushed this enough over the last two years. I think in the next 12 months, you know, honestly, you and I and others, we need to think really how we are going to get this issue on the agenda. Because if we don't, we really could see this planet going in a direction over the next century that we can't turn back from. That's a chilling thought, and it's certainly one shared by all our master's students. When you ask most of our students here, they're profoundly worried and depressed. It seems that there's a generational factor here. Anyone under 25 gets this, and they really think this is the biggest issue. But it does seem that uh, the older leaders don't quite get it. Well, that's think... an interesting point. How do we get young people mobilised to make a difference here? How do, how do we get their voice injected into political discussions. Again, I think in the health community, we've got to be creative. We've got to do things a different way. Honestly, it's not about publishing papers in medical journals like The Lancet. No. We need to be on the front lines of political activism. Yeah. And there are individual issues, like uh, you and I better not discuss our carbon footprint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, we should be doing our Skype conferences, not going to conferences. That's yeah. absolutely true. And do video on global health websites. <laughs> right, we'll get you back next year to talk more about sustainable development, guys, because this one will run and run. If we have a planet, let's have to come back. Exactly. Thanks, Richard. Thank